Hello, Paul Hamilton here from UTV. We love Jenga. Uh, anticipation, the climax, but it's also a spatial game. So it's going to lend itself well to a really great augmented reality um, project. Um, so we're going to create this in Reality Composer free app, and we're going to make an AR version, which is going to be super exciting to be able to create this from scratch. So why don't we jump into Reality Composer and get started? And there's some basic tutorials um, that you can find online. So a little bit of experience is great, but let's just jump straight into it. I'm going to jump into Reality Composer and hit my plus at the top and create a new document. If you've already got a cube there, we're going to create a horizontal anchor. If you've already got a cube there, you can just tap on it and delete it. Um, but the first thing I want you to do is go up to your three dots and make sure that you've got your duplicate with behaviors toggled on. This is super important so that we don't have to create 100 behaviors. Um, so make sure that's toggled on. That's the first thing I want you to do. Hit your three dots. Now, we're going to make sure that our AR game here kind of fits within a meter by a meter. Uh, we want to make sure that it's kind of to scale. So I'm going to go up to my plus. I'll select a basic cube. I'll tap on it and go up to my properties. Now here is where you can change the look of it, uh, the material, the kind of the mesh that you've got on top. You can make it anything that you like. Not super important at this stage. What is important is the size. So I'm going to make mine just a green. I might go with a plastic kind of material, but I'm going to make my width 30 centimeters. It's about the length of a ruler. Um, so I'll make that 30 centimeters. And this is super important because we're going to duplicate this as we go along. Uh, you can make it a meter. If you want to do a stand up huge game, you can. Um, you can do a range of different things, but I'm just going to keep it really simple for this one. I'm going to make lots of mistakes too. So you can kind of problem solve as we go along. So it's about 30. I'm going to look at it from different angles, make sure it's not under the ground. And then down the bottom, I'm going to press on the physics and I'm going to toggle it on and I'm going to hit the fixed word there and make it dynamic. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then I'm going to go along and make it kind of like a rubber material. I want it to really bounce around when it crashes. So I'm going to make it like a rubber material. I'm then going to tap off my cube. And you can see on the right here in my properties, now I can make the floor like a rubber surface as well. So I'm going to get lots of bounce. I could adjust my gravity. I'm not going to at this stage, but you can kind of play around with that as well. So what we're going to do now is we've created our simple kind of template block. And we've done almost most of the hard stuff already. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, make sure it's not on the ground. And I'm going to tap on my behaviors. I'll hit my plus. I'll go right down the bottom and create a custom behavior. So the trigger is going to be a simple tap. So I'm going to go up to tap here. And then I'm going to tap on my cube to select it. See how it says one object selected and I'm going to press done. Make sure you do that. That's super important. Now my action is going to be a simple one. It's going to be a hide. Now I need to once again make it zero. So it's going to hide automatically, not a delay or gradually. And then I'm going to hit my choose and make sure that I have got my cube selected. Now I'm going to press play, click on it or tap on it and make sure it disappears. Test, test, test. Um, do that again a hundred times if you need to make sure it's working and make sure you press play at the top. We're also going to add another behavior. It's going to be a sound. So it's going to play a sound when I tap on it. So when I tap on this block, it's going to play a sound. Now I'm going to hit on my gallery here and type in the word hit because it's got some beautiful little sound effects. <laughs> press on it. Yep, that's sounding good. Sounding really good. So when I tap on it, it's actually going to um, play the hit as well as hide. Um, so when I press play, it's going to disappear and play the sound. Now, I'm going to go through this. You can see at the moment it hides before it plays the sound. If I drag the sound on top of it so there's no gap, it's going to happen simultaneously. But here's the problem. When I tap on it, it's going to hide before it plays the sound. Now, um, if, if an object hides, it doesn't have any properties to it, so it can't play the sound. So a way around this, I'll, I'll kind of talk it through, is to have the, the sound play first, and then sequentially it hides directly after it. So let's see how we can actually do that. Um, I'm going to kind of uh, pull this apart a little bit. So at the moment, simultaneously, it hides before it plays the sound, so I'm not getting that sound. So what you can actually do is here. What we want to do is separate the hide and the play sound. And we want to play the sound first before it then hides. 
If I do it the other way around, it's going to hide and then it won't actually play the sound. So you don't have to have them happening simultaneously. You can drag the play sound in front of the hide so that there's still a gap. And so it'll play the sound, that beautiful hit as I tap it, and then it will hide automatically. So that's just something to kind of work through. Let's keep going though. So what I'm going to do here is I've done my block, I've done my behaviors, I've got my toggled on behaviors. I'm simply going to tap on it once and duplicate it. Now, this is super important. We don't want, uh, I'll just quickly, yep. Uh, what we don't want is one object inside or touching another. You want to kind of make sure it's just a line. So it's got that yellow line up here, um, up at the, uh, the, the um, adding it, the little uh, magnetic, um, magnet at the top, you want to make sure that that's on at the top and you want to make sure that you duplicate, but you don't want them inside each other. So what you want to make sure that you can do is you duplicate, you select all and duplicate, but you want to make sure that they're not on top. See this little magnet at the top, make sure that it kind of goes to each spot and doesn't go over the top. So what we want to make sure here is we want to press play and they don't kind of explode. <laughs> if they explode, it means they're inside each other or under the ground or something like that. So just be really careful. So all I'm going to do here now is tap on the gray part of my scene and go to select all. Now, when I select all, I can then tap on one of the objects and I can duplicate and it duplicates all of them. So what I'm going to do is make a bit of a base by dragging my different cones Make sure it's kind of, it locks on and it lines, but it doesn't go inside. Keep pressing play at the top. That's super important so it doesn't explode. You don't want to do the whole thing and then it doesn't work. So I've kind of got a bit of a base. So what I'm going to do is select all again by tapping on the gray, duplicate that whole base, and then I'm going to drag along, I'll, I'll align it first, get it over the top, and then I'm going to drag over the green and kind of rotate it. Then I'm going to move it by the red, look at it from a different angle and raise it by the green. These are our different axes. And this is what you want to take your time with. You want to make sure you get it. You press play at the top. Make sure that they're not overlapping or inside each other. Press play before you go on to the next step. Because all I'm going to do then, then is a select all again and duplicate. So I'm going to press play. It's all looking good. I'm going to tap on it. Make sure that it's kind of um, removing the different blocks. Awesome. The dynamic physics is working. It kind of falls down. That's pretty awesome. So you want to test, test, test. Don't keep rushing it. Make sure you get each layer right before you tap on a gray area, select all, tap on a block, duplicate, and then obviously you're just going to layer those whole duplicates on top of each other by dragging the green. Now there's a little undo button at the top left-hand corner. See the little arrow at the top there? That's important to do undos, but you want to make sure this is right and you press play on each time to make sure that you're getting it right because this is the important bit. It's not exploding. Mine's a little bit wonky. That's okay. The wonky's good, but you want to make sure that you kind of test it on each layer because you can see here when I tap on the gray and select all and then tap and duplicate, you're actually duplicating a lot more. So that way you want to make sure that you get each layer right or else you're going to have something that explodes and doesn't work. So a little bit like coding and computational thinking with your students, make sure that you test, test, test on each layer. Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm just basically duplicating each layer, rotating it by dragging on the green circle and then kind of drag it in space. Now I've got lots of tutorials. If you look online, Paul Hamilton, UTB, Reality Composer, there's lots of basic tutorials. You probably want to go through these first. Now see how it kind of aligns. It's not inside each other. It's very wonky. It's not perfect because I wanted to demonstrate that. If I press play though, it's not exploding. So I don't have the layers on top of each other, but when I'm tapping, it's definitely kind of, um, removing each of those blocks as we go along, okay? That magnet at the top, the snapping tool, the little magnet is really important. You should get that beautiful yellow line. So what I'm gonna do here is why don't, I've brought in a little cone. I'm gonna make my cone gold, turn on the physics, make it rubber, just like I did. I might scale it up a little bit as well. Why don't I make it gold? Because it's gonna sit on the top. I think I can find the gold there somewhere. 
or it might be just another color. Oh, I could make it a nice kind of pinky color. I might scale it up, make it big. And I'm going to drag it by the green over by the red cone, dragging the cones and make it sit on top because that can be like when that falls, the game's over. And so what I'm going to do is always press play at the top to do your testing. And what it should do is have that little hit sound and it should remove or hide the block when you tap. And the users can kind of walk around it. You can play this in pairs. You can scale it up. You can do some really cool things. So if I press play here and I tap, you can see that it's removing the block and the ones on top of it are kind of, um, because they've got dynamic physics applied, they're going to drop. So I could go to my plus and I'm going to add a little sphere. Now this is going to be my restart button. So I've added a sphere. I might make it a different color here. Let's make it a different color. And we want our users to be able to restart the stack, the Jenga. So we're going to do a green or a bluish kind of color here. And then we're going to go to our behaviors, which is up near our properties. We're going to create a new... Oh, look at all those behaviors. See how it duplicated all the behaviors, did all the work for us? That's pretty cool. You wouldn't want to do that individually. Um, I'm going to go up to plus. I'm going to go to my custom behavior. I'm going to tap on my trigger and make a tap. I'm going to select my sphere press done. Make sure that's selected. Super important. And then here for my add action, I'm going to make it go to a scene, which is the original scene that I've got. Now, before I do that, let me show you. See the scenes up here, top left-hand corner? When you press those, I've only got one scene. So if I tap on it and restart the scene, if I go down here and find the go to scene, there it is there, and I select scene one, it's just going to restart it. So this is a Super cool way. So if I have a play, it's not going well, or I want to restart the game, it's all falling. But when I press the blue sphere here, it's going to restart or reset the scene. Look at that. Magic. And it's basically reloading that scene. So that's my little restart button. I think we're basically done. How cool is this? We've got our own Jenga game, which is awesome. Now, how do I share it with friends? How do I share it with friends? Well, what we're going to do is, oh, I might just tap on each of these, um, add some different colors. So you can actually now just click on each of your little Jenga stacks and just maybe add some different colors, make it a little bit interesting. We won't go into it today, but you can actually make each of these blocks static as well, a little bit like a marble run so that they don't move, but things still collide with it. We might do that in a different tutorial, which is cool. So I'm just going to do, oh, let's do a really golden block there. That's pretty cool. That's looking really great. It's looking a little bit more aesthetically um, different. It is wobbly. It's not perfect. Kids can do anything. You can create different shapes. You can do lots of really cool stuff. That's what I said there about the static. We could make a gold block static, which means stay in midair. But I'm going to go to my three dots. I'm going to go to my export. And I'm going to export as this as a file type called USDZ or Z. Now, before I do that, if you don't have that option, let me show you where you toggle that on. Okay, because you might not have that option you might have. So go to your settings. Now down the left-hand side of your settings, down here, you'll see all of the apps. So you want to find Reality Composer. And this is how you might set up with your students, or if you're doing this with um, a business, you can set this up at the start. Go to Reality Composer, and you want to toggle on the Enable USDZ export or Z export. You can also toggle off the template. You know how you get that cube and the little bit of text each time you start a new project? You could toggle that off and we're going to export that and we're going to save it to our files. So let me go to maybe on my iPad and I'm going to call this Jenga game because it's going to sit in my files. I want to be able to find it quickly and we might call it Jenga style. Now, when I open up a USDZ on mine, it's going to open up Procreate by default. So um, I always make this mistake, but most iPads or iPhones, you just tap on it. It will open up in AR, which is pretty cool. So let's go to our files. And um, if I go to my files and I tap on that file, it's going to open up Procreate, which is not great, but there's a way around that. See how it's here? Jenga file, it's an AR file. It's cool. If I tap on it, it's going to open up Procreate. I don't want that. Let me close that down. Um, so I'm going to do a long press and just open that in Quick Look or Preview, which is what most devices do if you don't have Procreate. So if I go over here to Quick Look, on mobile devices on Apple, it will open up in AR. I'm just going to view it as an object so I can show you. And basically, if I tap on it, all my behaviors and interactions will work. How cool is this? You can view it in AR. If you want in your house, you can... Um, 
You could share it with an, a, a couple of people and play it together. It's obviously best played together and take turns at doing it. And how good is that? And hopefully my restart button works as well if I tap on my blue sphere. Oh, how good is that? Restarting. So I'm only viewing it up the top here in object mode at the moment, but you could view it in AR mode. And there we've got it. We've got our own augmented reality game. How cool is that from start to finish? Check out the basic tutorials first if you found that a little bit difficult. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, super fun in regard to being able to um, create something like a product, like an AR game straight off. I hope you enjoyed that. Paul Hamilton here from UTB. Make sure that you always go through the different elements as you go along, especially that toggle on behaviors. Hope you enjoyed it. Paul Hamilton here from UTB.